Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord tell us, truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. And if the Lord is good to you this morning, how about slipping up your hands to him and praising the wonderful, the wonderful name of the Lord? Heavenly Father, we thank you yes, God, for your mercy and your God, grace. You, we Lord. give you honor and glory yes, for your goodness Jesus. and your mercy. Yes, God, Lord, we ask Lord. that you would continue to move in a special way in our midst. Yes, we God. thank you, Lord, for being our king. Yes, Continuously move, Lord. We Lord, thank you. Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, as I loosen up, below me is a link. Below me is a link where you can give. Where really, you can go over to the comment section. And um, and there, the link is there where you can actually click on it. And um, there you can give in an offering. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And so... We appreciate you for your giving, and let's continue to do that. And we are on to something, and I, I want to push this work forward, right? So looking forward to some good things. And so let's go on with it. Let's get on into this. Also, before I go, I'm not, not that I'm leaving right now, but um, also we're going to be having church holding services at the First Presbyterian church down on mulberry and first street so we're gonna hold service there they have a, a chapel and so we're gonna talk more about it at the end of the church worship service and also we want to ask you to invite someone to that church service let's make it good let's have a good time and um let, let's bring some people out to the house of the lord tonight we're going to have our first in gathering since covid so god is good and, and um, the Lord is going to bless. And so with that being said, hey, let's pray over the gift and the giver, y'all. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. 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 So again, you can go to the hyperlink over in the comments section, and you can click, and there you can give. And we appreciate your giving. All right. I want to give a shout out to uh, Sister Nita. I want to give a shout out to her. And, um, and I want to ask everyone to pray for Sister Nita, okay? And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Sister Shimona. I also want to ask everyone to pray for Sister Shimona. All right? She probably was like, you know, why pastor have everybody? Just pray for it, you know. Amen. Just pray. And we just want to lift people up in prayer Amen. and and, uh, and things. And also want to give a shout out to Sister Brittany and her family. And so, and, and want to give a shout out to Tobias if he is listening. Okay. A shout out to Sister Serrano. I appreciate you. And a shout out to uh let's see i got one more i want to shout out to i want to shout out to brother lance god bless you brother lance and a shout out to everyone i just you know just want to just bring up some people real quick we want to go over to the book of mark chapter 9 verse 43 we're over in the book of mark chapter 9 verse 43 and we're going to read it down through verse 50 and uh i'm getting there Mark 9, verse 43 through 50. And here we go, y'all. Here it is. It says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, 
and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell. And their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. All right, brothers and sisters. And for a text, I just want to just take this text just to gauge in the gauge the brain. It says, and if in verse 43, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched, right? And we want to preach on a message entitled maimed for life maimed for life, all right? And we're going to um, try to bring it and present it in a way where it's going to make sense to us, right? And also, I want to ask you to look for the game changer, something that will help change the game or help you to shift into a higher gear, something that will forever change you in this service into that better person, that better Christian, right? And so um, let's do this, y'all, and, and uh, to God be all of the glory. The Lord is not into wasting people's time. God cares about your time, and the Lord is going to meet with you this morning because of who he is. We come to church. We come to the online services to be served by God. I want you guys to remember that. I am going to church so that the Lord can serve me, all right? And we take what the Lord serves us in the service out to, uh, and we apply it in our lives. We live it outside the doors. Yes, we're here to worship God, yes, but this is a church service. It is a service, okay. all right? To supply people with the very things that they need to navigate in this life for God. All right, so let's do this, y'all. Uh, Sister Davis, ma'am, if you don't mind asking God's blessing. Lord, thank you for your words of truth and power, God. Father, I pray that you would help us all to be attentive to the message that you have for each and every one of us individually this morning. Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts ready and thirsty to receive your word. Father, I pray also that you would make preaching easy for the man of God. Hide him behind the cross, Lord, so that all sees only you, Lord. We are careful to give you the praise, the honor, and all glory for what is accomplished in this service this morning and what will be accomplished in the lives of those who hear and watch in the future. We are careful, and we give you all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Main for life. And in getting this message, I said, well, that's quite a title. I don't know how attractive it will be just looking at the face of it. But um, this, it is what it is. And thank God for those who are listening this morning. And also, um, if something is going on with the video, Somebody please let us know. Amen. All right, at the service. I got I got Sister Brittany. She's she's gonna be on top of that for me. But anyway, let's do this, y'all. Main for life. And looking at this scriptures, it seemed pretty brutal, seemed pretty drastic and everything. But there there's really a blessing that uh, proceeds uh, from this word. When we begin to read the word of God and we're reading, looking for God to speak to us, we're looking, we're searching for something. See, you cannot read the word of God just in the name of reading it. Just, I'm just going to read the word for whatever reason, or it, uh, but you got to read it with purpose. 
That's what I'm trying to say. And when you read it with the purpose of, I really want God to speak to me. I want the Lord to guide me and really show me I am seeking uh, something that's going to help me from the scripture. Right. And when we read it from that standpoint, the words of Lord begin of the Lord begins to lift off the pages and begins to impress our heart, begins to deal with us because uh, the word of God is God's heart. It is God's heart reaching out to our heart. Yes. And so let's do this. Let's take a look at this blessing here. Maimed for life. When somebody loses an eye, it seems like the ears begin to take over. They lose both their eyes, and all of a sudden, they're able to hear sounds better than what a person can hear who have their eyes. Okay? If you uh, take a person... If you cut both the person's arms off, they become more coordinated with their feet, right? They're better coordinated with their feet than, they, than a person who has their arms and their feet. And it's, a, it's very amazing how you can see them even, those who have no arms. Some of them can play the guitar with their feet. They would not have ever played the guitar yes. with their feet if they still had their arms. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. Follow me, right? And and so uh, it, 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 they're able to drive with their feet, right? And so, again, it's amazing how that things happen. Uh, uh, certain things begin to be enhanced after things are lost, right? Yes. Things begin to become more enhanced after things are lost. It's like God has put it in nature to be able uh, to have some sort of an of a of an awakening if something is cut off, and it that can be physically, and that is no doubt also spiritually, most right, definitely yes. spiritually. Now follow me for a moment. So come back to me. All right. Now check it out. Main for life. Here we go. It's impossible to have a impoverished mindset and a successful mindset at the same time. You can't have these two mindsets, right? It, again, it is impossible to have a poverish mindset and a successful mindset at the same time. Amen. It is impossible to be spiritual minded and carnal minded at the same time. It is impossible to be saved and unsaved at the same time. It's impossible to not be born again and born again at the same time. Yes. That's a funny sounding word to not be born. You know, you see what I'm saying? It is impossible to set your affections on heaven and set your affections on the world at the same time. It's impossible to be a saint and a sinner at the same time. For one cancels out the other. One must be cut off for the other to live. Yes. The rich man only has a rich man's heart, y'all. Yes. The poor man only has a poor man's heart. The both cannot have rich and poor hearts at the same time. Yeah. Listen to me, y'all. They cannot, the poor cannot have a poor man heart and a rich man heart at the same time. Neither can a rich man have a poor man heart along with his rich heart at the same time. And so that being said, brothers and sisters, that's why when people get saved, when people get right with God, it is amazing how you hear th this kind of a testimony. And the testimony goes like this. You hear them say, it felt like my sinful lifestyle was just a dream. It, uh, some of the stuff I don't even remember anymore. Are you with me this morning? Yes. When people really get right with God, when they become born again, after a while, they, begin, they tend to forget how they used to live. And it goes with, them, with that 
thought of out of sight, out of mind. The way that they used to live is no longer in sight. The way that they used to live is no longer active. The way that they used to that they used to live has been maimed, has been cut off from them, and now they live and they are focused on this new life that has been enhanced that is alive because the old life has been cut off. Again, uh, that's why we read in the scripture, right? When Jesus said, it is better to cut that hand off, that one hand that brings forth offense, than have two hands and, and die and go to hell, right? right? It's better to cut off that one hand that brings offense than have two hands and die and go to hell. And we know that he's literally talking about your, your physical hand, right? Yeah. But we can apply this also in spirit, brothers and sisters, if there is something uh, that needs to be cut off, then it must be cut off in order for the other to live, else yes. the other will not live. Amen. Now, Jesus was cut off from the fellowship with the Father, right? He said on the cross, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Why? Because Jesus had taken the sins of the world. When Jesus had taken the sins of the world upon him, he was pretty much cut off from fellowship with the Father. Why? So that you and I can have fellowship with the Father. Okay? Amen. So therefore, we can say that Jesus was cut off from the earth. Yes, he was cut off from the earth through death, right? And so therefore, Jesus was maimed from the earth that we may live. He was severed from the earth that we may live. The understanding that, yes, he rose on the third day, yes, but he had to die first, right? Mm -hmm. And in order for us to rise, in order for us to be that brand new person in God, in order for us to really, truly change, something about us has to die, right? Mm -hmm. When someone is maimed, that means what was lost will forever be lost, which means they have to adjust to not having that in which they were so used to anymore for so many long years anymore. You don't y'all ain't listening, are you? When someone is maimed, that means what was lost will forever be lost. Which means they have to adjust to not having that in which they were so used to anymore. For so many long years anymore. See, a lot of times people are used to something. They, they, they're so accustomed in it and it has deep roots in them, right? Mm -hmm. But when that thing get cut off, that thing that they depended on, that lifestyle that they leaned on, that comfort zone, when it get cut off, that is when the person has to adjust to something else. Yes. And this morning, I hope someone is willing to cut off the old life, yes. willing to let go of the old life so that they can adjust to becoming dependent on the Savior. Amen. When they are dependent on the Savior, that is when they know what it is to be saved. That is when they know what it is to be born again because they have permanently uh, maimed themselves or, or maimed that old lifestyle or cut off that old lifestyle uh, uh, from the life, uh, uh, from their life, right? And I'm talking about brothers and sisters maimed for, for life. Again, through adjusting, they began to lean on something else in place of the thing that they were so used to. And an awakening takes place in that person, that person begins something uh, uh, begins to work, uh, begins to awaken in them. Just as when someone uh, uh, takes one eye out, then all of a sudden they're able to see better uh, with the other eye that's still living. Right? Yes. Uh, when uh, uh, you take someone's uh, arm off, it could be their right arm that they were so used to writing with. All of a sudden, they become way, way more coordinated 
in the left arm than what they were in the ever were in the right arm. But they would not know the coordination until they have until the right arm is lost, right? Until the right hand is over with. Until the strong arm, the very thing that they depended on, is absolutely gone. And they realize I cannot get that arm back. Are you with me? They realize I'm not going to get my hearing back. When they realize I'm not going to get my sight back, something else takes place of the sight that's lost. Something else takes place of the hearing that's lost. Something else takes place of the arm that's lost. And something else takes place of the life that's lost when a person realizes that they are not going to be able or capable of getting that back. And that's the way it is. That's the way it is. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 tells us this word. It says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Let's read that again. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. That means to destroy, a uh, kill it. That means to make a permanent, uh, uh, a, a, to, to maim that thing, to permanently get rid of that thing so that something else can live. Amen. Okay, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Then it begins to name the things that need to be mortified, right? Fornication. When somebody mortifies fornication, something that they were so into, uh, something that they were so used to, something that was their comfort zone, something that was their joy or their so-called joy or their so-called peace, when somebody uh, begins to mortify fornication, then guess what? An awakening takes uh, place in that person, brothers and sisters. An awakening takes place in that person to where uh, they become a virtuous individual and they love it. All right. It says fornication, mortify uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is greed, which is idolatry. Right. When the things, when sin is mortified, then an awakening and a great adjustment takes place that causes a literal, uh, you become a spectacle, meaning uh, you become amazing in the sight of God and you become amazing in the sight of men who are watching. The amazing thing about the people who, uh, who, have, who have been maimed, who may have lost a limb, is now what they can do. And those of us who have all of our limbs, we look at them as like, wow, man, how was he able? There was a man, or there is a man in the MMA who fights with one arm. He only has one arm. Excuse me. I'm losing my throat here. <laughs> he only has one arm. And the amazing thing is this fella is, is difficult to beat. From, from what I've read, from what I saw. This dude can whoop someone with one arm. But check this out, right? If he had both his arms, if he had both his arms, and let's say that you tied one of his arms behind his back, no doubt he would not be able, he would probably be, he probably would not be able to fight as good as he fights because of the fact that he has, you, you just tied that one arm that he depended on behind his back. But because it is maimed, he practices, he practiced with that one arm to the point where this dude is just difficult to beat. But if he had both of his arms, then he would not have had any reason to adjust to the one arm, right? Again, tying, if he had both of his arms, you tied that one arm behind his back, then he would be less of a fighter than what he is now probably easily defeated. 
And that's what I'm getting to t uh, this morning, right? When a person is allows their old life to be maimed, a new man awakens. They have been born again of the Spirit of God. They have listened to the word of the Lord as Jesus begins to deal with them about their sins, as the Holy Spirit begins to talk to them, as Jesus is exalted in their lives, and, and they begin to see that Jesus died for our sins. They begin to see the destruction of a person's life if they continue in sin and ultimately die and go to hell, right? When they make up their mind and they come to God and they begin to repent of their sins and they come to the Lord and they have been born again because they've asked for forgiveness, then all of a sudden they become more coordinated with that new man or that new woman. They begin to adjust. They begin to live for it and begin to walk with God. And they begin to become more and more forgetful of the old life that they used to live saying, I cannot believe that I used to behave that way. They, it becomes like a dream of something uh, because of the fact that the new focus is the new life walking with God, and the old life is out of sight. Why? Because the old life has been destroyed. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. I remember when I was riding down the street not too long ago, and just to, just to give some a little bit more potency to the memory, I began to share with a friend of mine. I said, you know what? One thing that's kind of a, a little bit I know this is going to happen. I'm going to begin to forget how I used to be. When I say how I used to be, I'm talking about how I used to be in recent years because of the change that's taken place in my life as a Christian and as a man of God. And let me tell you something, be real with you. I don't even want to be capable or able to think that way anymore. The way that I used to think five years years ago, I don't even want to be capable of thinking that way anymore. Why? It's called growth. It's called growth. And not to forget where you come from. I'm not saying that, right? We know that it's by the grace of God that we are what we are, right? Yeah. But the thing is, there is nothing wrong with this being so engrossed in being uh, right with God and walking with the Lord and knowing him in the reality and having this new life and having this great awakening uh, take place in us. This new man, this strong individual for God, this man that has a total, total different mindset, right? This sister that has a total different mindset. Why? Because they have uh, the mind of Christ. They are different and naturally as a person who takes up a new language and begins to learn it, becomes engrossed in it, becomes very fluent in that thing, begins to forget their native tongue, for, begin to forget some of the words in their native tongue because the focus is the, is the second language that they have so it is when you are truly born again of the Spirit of God. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm on one. You can't be a saint and a sinner at the same time. One has to die. And when one dies, the other is enhanced. Ask the person who, 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 is, uh, who, who uh, walked with God for so many years. But all of a sudden, they put to death that saint. Guess who lives? The sinner lives. When the loser begins to quit serving God, the old life is enhanced. And as the person who is living a sinful lifestyle, when that sinful lifestyle dies, the new life is enhanced and the saint begins to live. You see, you got good and evil. Either evil wins or either good wins. Either, either evil dies in that person's life or either good dies in that person's life right? 
either Jesus, Jesus is risen or either he's dead in your life. Right. And he is risen, brothers and sisters. Yes, we need to walk with the Lord. And I'm talking about being made for life again. You talk to a rich man, that rich man cannot, it's impossible for him to have the mindset of a poor man. You talk to the poor man, it's impossible for the poor man to have the mindset of the rich man. The, for the poor man to have the mindset of the rich man, the poor, the poorish mindset has to die. And for the rich man to have the mindset of the poorish man, the rich man's mindset has to die. Sinful mindset, Christ-like mindset. One has to die for the other to be enhanced. Yes, brothers and sisters, being maimed means I'm at the point of no return. Amen. And that's the reason why I'm talking about being maimed for life. There are some things I want to be maimed for life about, Amen. right? There are some things I don't want growing. I want utterly destroyed uh, out of my life because that's the only way I could be what God would have me to be. And I have no problem with that. You have to sacrifice. Some people try to hold on to two lives. Oh, I want all of my limbs. I want my sinful hand and I want my righteous hands. I need all of my limbs. You'll never be a fighter for God with all of your limbs. Something has to be cut off, right? And when I'm talking about, I'm just illustrating a point. You can't have one foot walking in darkness and the other foot walking in light. Where will your head go? You can't split your head in half. You, you can't have one side of your body walking over in the dark and the other side walking in light. All has to walk in the light and the darkness has to be made. Or either all has to be walking in darkness and the light has to be made. And I would that the darkness be made. Amen. Yes, we got to walk with God. We got to be what he would have us to be. Until this, uh, until we are maimed for life, nothing will ever happen. There will never be a change. There's nothing super duper about us, right? We want to be super duper. Super duper uh, cannot come uh, when mediocre is attached to super duper. Super duper and mediocre don't get along, right? right. Super duper cannot think or see or understand uh, like the mediocre man sees thinks and understand. Neither can the mediocre man uh, uh, think and understand like the super duper man. It just don't happen that way, brothers and sisters. The, the mediocre man has to die to be super duper. The evil man has to die to be good. The flunky has to die to be a straight A student, right? right. The, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the sinner has to die to be the saint, right? Yes. Right? Saul had to die in order to become Paul. Yes. It's just the way that it is. Amen. Jacob had to die to become Israel, right? Yes. And Jesus had to die to become the Savior. Amen. Right? Something has to die to become. You yes. have to die to become. And unless you die, you will not live. Unless you die. If, if, if the man out there doesn't know Christ in the reality, I'm not talking about in a formality or in a ritual. I'm talking about if a man it does not know Jesus in a reality to where he is truly their Lord and truly their Savior, he will die. And forever lose his life. But if he's willing to die in order to gain Christ, he will save his life. Yes. Brothers and sisters, there's not a fighter like the fighter that has been maimed for life. That dude has given up something in order to gain something. 
He's given up his time, his time in order to uh, become that in which he's trying to become. He's, he's willing to lose sleep over it. He's willing to do uh, to lose comfort over it, right? They're willing to, to, to lose whatever in order to get that because uh, there is something about them that has been maimed. And all of us, all of us have to be maimed somewhere, right? To get that coordination, to be what God would have us to be, something has to die. And last but not least, we're talking about an enhancer. It says, for everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. And I'm about to shut my lip, right? Our sacrifice... We, the way that we live our life is going to be tried by, by the Holy Spirit. We're going to be tried by God. We're going to be tried. Right? We're going to go through some things. We're going to, to experience some things. Right? And we're going to be salted with temptation. Things are going to come our way. Yes. And when I say temptations, I'm talking about trials. But brothers and sisters... Our sacrifice for God during the trial has to be salted with the salt of the covenant of salvation. Through it all, I must be saved. I must live for God. I must walk with him. The way that you live has to be seasoned with the gospel. Reverend Davis, how do you, where do you get that from? I get that from, and I'm about to shut my lip because I said, because I've often wondered, what that scripture means. And I've heard different things. So I went back and did my little cross reference over to the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 19. It says, All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord have I given thee, and thy sons and thy daughters with thee by statute forever. Again, he is saying that the offerings of the children of Israel has been given to the Levites. Right. Listen to me. Follow me. I'm going somewhere with this. It has been given to the Levitical priests, given to the Levites, these these priestly men who had families and saying that they can eat of the offerings. Their families can eat of the offerings. This is how that God fed the Levites who were of the tribe of Levi now and who did uh, who did the priestly duties in the Old Testament. Over in the Old Testament, and this was a law given that would be permanent. It says, after the semicolon, it says, It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. So this, in other words, this, the salt that was placed on the offering represented the covenant that God made with the children of Israel and and with the Levites concerning the priesthood, okay? And brothers and sisters, uh, over in the New Testament, our lives, the way that we live, should be salted with because, uh, with because I'm saved. In other words, because of the covenant that the Lord has made through Jesus. It is a memorial. I do good not because I'm a good person or not because I was raised good. I do good because I'm saved. Amen. I live my life the way I live because I'm saved. Amen. Because I'm saved, I don't lie. Because I'm saved, I don't cuss. Because I'm saved, I don't do fraudulent things. Amen. Because I'm saved, my sacrifice is salted with the gospel. Amen. All right? Because there's a lot of people who do good, you know, do gooders, but anyway. Our God is good. <laughs> the Lord is good. Adjustments, man. Adjustments is are made. See, sometimes I'm about to shut up. I really am. You can't adjust. I, there are some things we can't, you just can't adjust until something dies. People want adjustment, but it ain't you. You don't you're not giving yourself enough reason to adjust if something is still there. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, and it's just real talk. The only reason why that fighter is able to beat a man with one hand. How many of you can beat a man with one hand? I'm talking about the average man. How many of us with one hand could beat the average man, the, an average an average 30-year-old with one hand? How many of us could do it? And guess what? He was among the number of people who could not beat a man with one hand. But because he lost one hand, he trained, he adjusted, and became a great fighter, probably better than he was when he had two hands. He probably would beat himself, the person he used to be when he had two hands, because he had a reason to work harder than he's ever worked, because I only have one hand. And when you get rid of the old life, you will never adjust. Or, or you won't, you are rather, you will never adjust until you get rid of the old life. Amen. And getting rid of the old life is permanently accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Permanently, no matter what. Amen. I don't care what's going on in my life. I'm going to be saved. You don't take off your helmet of salvation. Because something happened, All right. it shouldn't matter what happens. This happened, so what? See, when you're maimed, that man couldn't go over to, to the hospital. He don't even know where his arm is. It could be in the landfill somewhere. He couldn't go find his arm. But there's a lot of people when their arm get cut off for the Lord, spiritually speaking, they go out and they go through hell and high water to try to find that old life again. Mm. And what did you find? An arm that's been corrupted and nasty and smelly and stanky. Mm. And they still try to attach it to their body. And it don't work the same no more. Right. Once you get saved and you go back, that old life don't work the same anymore. It just don't. It stinks worse than it did. Why? Because it got cut off from you at one point. Mm. All right. Right? And what you going back to? A smelly, nasty thing that you had gotten rid of. And they seek and try to find it. Main for life, y'all. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Leave it on a positive note. Let me leave on a positive note. But if you sever that life, guess what? You become way, way more powerful than you ever imagined for God. Amen. You are on your way to heaven, feeling the presence of the Lord. Right? Amen. And Jesus said, let's go higher. Cut that thing off that's dragging you down, that's bringing forth an offense to you and to God, that's a stumbling block. Cut it off. Right. Make up your mind. Yes. Make a permanent thing happen. All right? And you will adjust and understand the things that are of God. Let's bow our heads in reverence to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for the things that you have done. Let us continue to walk with you and be what you would have us to be and say what you would have us to say and go where you would have us to go. In Jesus' wonderful name, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, pray after me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I am cutting off the old lifestyle and I'm cutting it off permanently. I will never, ever go back to the way I used to live. From this day forward, I will walk with you and be what you would have me to be no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you and don't, don't leave. We're gonna be having church tonight and in gathering at the First Presbyterian Church on Mulberry Street, Mulberry and First Street. Where I want you to park is on the First Street side. 
I want you to park on the first street side. There's a little parking parking space right off on the side and you will see the first Presbyterian church van on the right. Or, or, or if you're coming from Riverside Drive, you'll see it on the right, okay? If you're coming from uh, Eisenhower or Mercer University, it'll be on your left, okay? And there's a small chapel when you get out your car and you cross the cross first street over uh going through a you're gonna walk you're gonna see the breezeway you'll see the small chapel on the right hand side and you come into that door and what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna have the door open so you can see exactly where you need to go all right and maybe somebody's standing out so we really want you to come and there are going to be um, some people there who are looking for you to come. All right. By you coming out, it will really much, it pretty much help us to continue to have church there. If we sit back and not, uh, and try and, 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 and don't make it to this church service, it can be somewhat of a hampering because they really, the people there want to meet you. So this is very serious and very important, okay, that you make it. It's very serious and important that you make it. If you're concerned about this work, I want you to make it, okay? If you're concerned about what, what, what's happening and you have the same burden I have for the work, I want you to make it. Hey, make God. God bless you, River. And look, get there by six. We can't do what we've been doing over at Riverside Drive, 4100 Riverside Drive. I give you a time, you get there five or 10 minutes late. We're going to have to be disciplined at least today. Okay? At least today. All right. Forget being there at six. Get there at 545. Get there early. All right? Again, we can't do like we, like we did at Riverside Drive church at 6 30 and we get there at 6 40. all right start the key to being on time is starting early starting early if, if you need to get dressed at five let's start getting dressed at five o'clock you need to get dressed at 4 30 get dressed at 4 30. all right so i'm just saying because and, and i'm coming this way because of what i've seen only because of what i've seen with revivals and church and all that. So try to get there. Let's cut procrastination, maim that thing, okay? So that we can adjust and be where we need to be on time. And guess what? When we get like that, it's a blessing. It'll be a blessing to you personally, all right? You can use that as a tool because you're developing discipline. So anyway, hey, may God bless you real good. Look forward to seeing you, and it's a beautiful place too, y'all. <laughs> Wait till you see it. To me, it's beautiful, so let's come on out. Hey, God bless you real good. Church tonight.